question is, what happened to a bit of a chit chat yesterday, and the question came up. This is your vegan blowfly, Duran Rider speaking. Question came up, isn't it hard to make a living off YouTube though? If you've read my ebook, Carb the Fuck Up, I've got an explicit chapter, step by step, action tips that I used to create and freely used to create where we're at today, income wise, impact wise on YouTube. And that works for anybody. Obviously, there's some of you out there who have more potential than us, but everyone can do what we're doing. Isn't it hard though? Yes. No. Is it hard for me to get out of bed at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., flip open my MacBook and start doing stuff online, social media, vegan activism? It's not hard at all for me. Is it hard for me to go to bed early to close the MacBook off? Yes, it's harder for me to close my MacBook or my phone off than it is to... Little fan here. It is harder for me to turn off than it is to turn on because I'm living my passion. So if it's not your passion, then it's, it's like near impossible because YouTube is so hard. There's it's such a hate machine out there on the internet. Such a hate machine. I mean, I've, I've been taken to Supreme Court, got punched in the face earlier this year. You know, yeah, every, I mean, this is like, we've, we've done so well on YouTube, but there's like that vegan cheetah guy, he's got a whole, he's making more money than the average university graduate in the US just doing a fucking TMZ style channel, which some of it's quite fucking funny, you gotta admit, but a lot of it's just fucking bullshit. It takes it too far. Uh, but it's an example of how well we're doing that our tips do work. If someone can actually make a good living of trashing us on YouTube, that's that's pretty fucking epic. So our advice does work. Is it hard though? <laughs> well it's not hard for Vegan Cheetah because he's having fun. I'm having fun, Freely's having fun. When you make something fun in life, you take care of motivation and it's no longer hard. It's hard when you don't really want to do it. I know professional level cyclists who are very clean, who are clean, and they can do it because they love it so much. They love the pain so much. They love the burn. They love the fucking element of racing. They don't get much results. They get fuck all results because they're natty, but they just love it so they can do it. I couldn't do it because I don't love racing that much. I couldn't deal with that much pain being a clean athlete. I just, I couldn't do that. And then it would be hard because it's not my passion. If it's your passion in life, it's not hard. It's just not hard. I can't do anything in life that I, I don't want to do. I find it impossible to do anything I don't want to do in life, no matter what the repercussions, no matter what the consequences. I find it literally impossible to do anything I don't want to do. The older I get, the more experiences I have, the more I realize I can't do anything I don't want to do, no matter what the consequence. Because why? Because I could be dead fucking the next hour. So I'm not gonna live my life for someone else or some other status quo concept or whatever. So is it hard to make a living on YouTube? If you're not passionate about it, if it it's, it's not about making a living, it's about making an impact. Because if you look at my first few YouTube videos, first few hundred, I'm uploading them from the local library. They're grainy as fuck. And it was like three years before I made a single cent on YouTube. I didn't even know you could make money on YouTube. I didn't even know it's an income source. I was like, this is pretty cool. People ask me questions. I can bang out videos and answer them. And that's how I started. And in 2011, someone was like, why don't you monetize your account, Harley? And I'm like, what? What does that mean? And I made like one cent or two cents in the first day. I made like 20 cents or something in the first week. And I was like, wow, it's 20 cents more than I had before. And that's cool. I get paid to do what I want to do. That's, that's a bonus. That's a fucking bonus when you can turn your passion into your profession. But here's the thing, you gotta be careful, because what can happen then is you start making money or getting fame, it can change people. I've seen so many, I've seen relationships change, I've seen people change, they get money or they get status, and they're like, whoa, you know, like, and it can do your fucking head in. So you gotta be careful. Because when you, you know, you just gotta be careful of that. You see it with celebrities, and now the new celebrities are YouTube celebrities. The Hollywood celebrities are dying off. It's the internet celebrities, man, that have this fucking insane following, insanely dedicated fans. It, I mean, and that's fucking awesome, man. That's the sign of how powerful YouTube's getting. And that's why if you're not on YouTube, then it's pretty hard, man. It's pretty hard to really create social change about something you want to put your efforts into unless you're on YouTube. It's like near impossible. Chris and Momo, you know? I've well, we got people from all around the world to hang out in here in Chiang Mai, Thailand. They carb the fuck up, ride up the mountains, meet people, meet each other, hang out, network, just chill. Get things done and have a good time. Is YouTube hard? No, if you're passionate. If you're not passionate, it's impossible. And quickly, 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 I almost saw there's people out there who are doing really well financially on YouTube, massive, massive uh, following, but they say nothing. 
often the people on YouTube who have the biggest following say the least. They say the least. I remember the messy heads in LA did a talk on stage and one of the girls, she says, why in social media the people who have the biggest following say the least, have le least to say. I was like, that's like fucking gold. That's so true. And I'd say that reason is, is those people don't want to stand up and really say what they're passionate about because they're scared of conflict, they're scared of disapproval, social disapproval, etc. And those are the people who are doing well. They have a big following, but they say nothing, they stand for nothing, and they don't really have fun. They're the people you sort of meet on the street and they're like, oh, I've got to go, I don't want to talk to you, blah, blah. Like Casey Neistat or fucking Life of Evil, all these people, not, not dissing them, but I'm just saying they don't have anything to really say. And I would say, if I could make an assumption here, that they don't really enjoy what they've got. I mean, the money's big and the, all that stuff, the fame's big, but are they, the, the passion's not really there because they're not really fucking getting the camera and really fucking saying what they want to fucking say because they're scared of the financial impact, they're scared of the social disapproval. And that, my friends, is how most people live through society. They're scared of really saying what they mean and meaning what they say, putting their heart in their sleeves and understanding that those who mind do not matter and those that matter do not mind. So if you live in that sort of realm, I would find that impossible because that would be like, just impossible for me to comprehend to live a life where you're scared of really saying what you want to fucking say, doing what you want to do, being who you want to be. That would be a prison. And I wouldn't give a fuck how much money I had, how many people just wanted a photo with me. If I couldn't really help them, help themselves, what's the point? And to recap, to recap, this is like, I'm going to do one video, three videos in one. To recap, turn your passion into your profession. What would you do tomorrow if you had a billion dollars? That's what you should be doing today. Obviously, some people have got kids, they've got a mortgage. It's a bit harder for them to slip out of that. But a lot of my audience is like uni students or whatever. I'm like, what would you do if you had a billion dollars? Would you really turn up to class? Would you really go and live with that person or stay with that person or that family or whatever? Ask yourself the question. Get your imagination flowing. Get the juices flowing. What would you do to? What would you do? today if you had a billion dollars? What would you do tomorrow if you had a billion dollars? What would you do if you had a billion dollars? Would you still go and study? Would you tell your parents to fuck off? Would you get that university degree and strip it up and shred it and put it on YouTube? Whoa, what would you do? And that's what you should do. And we're all heading that direction. If I had a billion dollars today, I'd still be making videos. I'd be doing some pretty fucking epic troll videos with that money. I'd be trolling the fuck out of it, you know? I'd be trolling it out. Hey. And that's, I'm living a billion dollar lifestyle right now. Every day I wake up, I do what the fuck I want to do, I hang out with people I want to hang out with, I eat what I want to eat, I wear what I want to eat, I, do what I, I just do whatever the fuck I want to do. Right around the car park, talking to my iPhone 6. This is my first ever phone. I got this phone in 2014. September, two, this, is my first, sorry, this is my first ever smartphone. I hadn't had a phone for seven years before this. Got rid of my phone, I think it was February 2007. Sold it at a pawn shop, bought some for a frozen organic durian in Adelaide, 2007 February roundabouts. And then this iPhone 6 came out in September 2014, so I bought this. And it's my first ever smartphone in my life. I got my first ever laptop, personal computer, any computer in my life, age 32. First uh, uh, smartphone, age 37. I'm a fucking late starter. If I can do it, any motherfucker can do it. But I'm passionate, I love doing this, man. I could go and live on the street tomorrow, or I could go and collect cans during the Adelaide summer and then with that money saved, just a few thousand bucks, come and live in Thailand during the winter. I could live on the street. I, could, I don't give a fuck. As long as I'm, I get to do what I want to do every day, that's all I give a fuck about. So people say, oh, it's for the money. Or... If it's for the money, how come I'm wearing a fucking ripped jersey still? How come I'm riding a bike that's three years old? <laughs> how come I give most of my time for free? How come I put on a free event where I talk for fucking 10, 12 hours a day? If it was all about the money. Money's good. Money can buy you nice bikes and good food, but at the end of the day, it gets pretty boring. So you've got to have, and that's why I see people, the celebrities get into cocaine and drugs and fucking strippers and all sorts of crazy sex parties and shit because they get so fucking bored. They feel so empty because of what they're doing. People give them accolades for being really good at stuff that's really fucking dumb. And they just, it does their fucking head, like actors are like, oh, I'm an actor and actress and stuff. And I was it's cool, but they just feel so empty because what they, they're like, you know, oh, I cried when I watch a movie. It's like, I was just, I was acting though. Why are we getting emotional about that? So these, that's why I see people, you know, the fame gets to their head, the relationships break down, the drugs come in, the fucking, all the craziness comes in, the people get jealous of your fame or your money or, and it just shit goes up. For most people, earning more money is a curse. Come to Chiang Mai, go to Rinping Supermarket, spend an hour there 
watching all the loaded families with the kids off the fucking out of control. They're spending big bucks on alcohol or gourmet food, but the kids are just off the hook. And these are the people who got the money. And then you go to the rural villages of Thailand where there's fuck all money and the kids are so well behaved and so chill. Just playing with sticks and a rock. Most people, more money is a curse. I'm not talking to people who live on less than $2 a day, but you know, most people get big disposal income. They just go crazy with it. You know, the fucking partners get jealous, their brothers or their sisters or their family it just gets hectic as. So you've got to find out what you're passionate about, turn your passion into your profession. And then when you're doing that, every day's, every day's play. <laughs> when all your work is play, you'll never work another day. And that's, my friends, how I think life should be. That's just my reality. You're welcome to disagree with me, or you're welcome to participate in my reality if that's what your reality would like to be like. I'm just doing my thing here, just rambling on. Carved up, G'd up, hyped up for the TT tomorrow. Just feeling really fucking good right now. Just pretty fucking high on life. And that's what I love about YouTube is I get to express my feelings and help other people who are on the same page or want to be on the same page. And I'm fucking so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that I've got this smartphone, I've got this internet connection, I can just ride my bike around car parks, no hands, don't touch that home, kids. And there's so many things to be grateful for. And we often we get caught up in focusing on what we need to have or whatever versus what we already have. Success is, for some people, success is getting what you want. For me, success is wanting what you've got. Think about it.